Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am welcoming Shannon Connors today to this interview series. I have known Shannon since we met in college a long time ago, there uh, in the 80s, and she has done a lot with her life to uh, move from uh, and being an educator, which I know she still is, but she's also brought a business idea to life. And so I wanted you to hear from somebody who has made the leap from idea to reality while raising four children, has the craziest life I've, like her, her life gives me a stomach ache. And uh, she is a single mom. I also want to say that. And she teaches like teeny tiny baby the second children. second graders, yes. And so um, I just want you to know like she's not sitting around watching soap operas while she's running her business. I just, I want you to know like she's a mom like you. She's a real woman like you. She's busy like you. So I'm going to turn it over to you and I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions, Shannon, and facilitate the conversation. But I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thank you for having me, Jen. I'm excited. Honor. So I want you to just tell everybody briefly who you are and how, who you are and what you do, but how do you describe the dream that you brought to life? Okay. Um, well, I'm Shannon Connors and I run Shannon Connors Fitness, which is a small personalized group fitness training facility. Um, and in that training facility, I work with men and women and children on their physical fitness, um, health and wellness, nutritional balance. Um, I do transformation classes. I do group fitness. I work with athletes and do training and development. So that's kind of a small description of what I do at Shannon Connors Fitness. I've been in business by myself for the last three years. Since 2000, May of 2015 was when I launched my own when I launched my own business, mm -hmm. um, I, st I really started to get the idea probably prior, I would say the year before that. I had worked for so many corporate gyms, you know, and I could name them all for you. I worked for everyone in our area. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, uh, the older I got, and I was 45 when I, you know, first launched my business. I'm 48 now. But I was tired of having a boss if that I mean that's I think number one I was tired of like you said I was a single mom four children I still was teaching school so the fitness part was a great part-time thing for me because it gave me things to do I'm not a very sit still kind of girl so it gave me things to do on my weekends on my nights off or days I didn't have my kids and it was something that I love to do and I'm passionate about so I'm like oh my god it's a perfect fit um, but I was tired of living by somebody else's schedule mm -hmm. and truth be told, and here's kind of a, a snapshot of why, how I got here. I was terminated by the four corporate gyms that I worked at. Mm -hmm. And every time, you know, the first one said, can you build our program? I build our program. And then they'd say, you know, there's too many people get your cult out of here. You know, the second, <laughs> so the second place was basically, um, you know, there's not enough flexibility in your schedule. I was the only instructor, but you're right. I couldn't be there 18 hours. I have other job and other children. The third place basically said, this is XYZ fitness, not Shannon Connors fitness. fitness. <laughs> and I shook her hand. I said, no, but that sounds so damn good. <laughs> so, and I cleaned out my locker and I walked out. Oh, and I think the day she said that to me, at first I was devastated. Don't get me wrong. Because I thought, what am I going to do now? I don't have any money. I don't have... I'm not, I'm not, I'm an educator. You're not I a daughter's person. No, I'm not. I did not go to college, Grim. I, John, if you remember, right. um, I was, I was in education all, all day long. I don't, I have no MBA. I don't have fancy degrees in marketing or any of that. And I want to just so, stop you there for one second because teachers have a really special mindset that is beaten into them, which is this is your job. This yes. is how much you get paid. And if you want to yeah. get paid more, you do this 20 hour workshop and we might pay you $200 more a right. year. And you're grateful for the $200 a year, but you oh. are not taught to think how you're not taught to think about clients or marketing yeah. or, or strategy. No. You are taught to bring people from here to here very quickly. Yeah. And now you needed to do that in a fitness realm, but you needed to learn how to run a business and market a business. And Absolutely. And, I, and I, here's my thing. I didn't think I had those tools mm -hmm. until I really dug deep. And then I realized a lot of what I learned in education was I could apply to business without having a business degree. 
if that makes sense. No, as a teacher, totally I, I, as I'm a saleswoman all day long. To I mean, they're only eight, but you know, I could sell to them that the sky is green, and they will believe me. So I thought I could do the same thing. Yes. And if you really look at the shift in my careers, because I'm still a teacher, I thought to myself, if I'm a fitness instructor, I'm still a, an educator. Yes, of course. It's just a different platform. So I took what I had, and I had to run with it. Okay, so this is such good news because so many teachers are so unhappy being teachers because it's such a grind. It's such a hard thing and they're kind of locked in like I have yeah. to be here for 25 years and this is the grade right. that I teach and <clears throat> this is the content that I teach. And what I really want, this is why I really wanted to have you on because I want teachers to know that that is not, there's no period at the end of that sentence. It's not I'm a teacher period, it's a comma. Right. And I also... Or right. I used to be a teacher and now I do this. And that's the number one thing. And the second thing is that I really love that you said, I had the tools because I'm an educator and I sell things all day long to people. Right. When I, when I think about like the linear way that teachers have to think, we have to plan and we have to be creative. We right. have to strategize and we have to use tactics. Like we, we have the best tools to start our own businesses. It, it, we we oh, do and teachers are afraid. See, and what if I can encourage teachers are one of the best time managers because they can take a twenty minute period and fill it with either a teachable moment or something quick. And I think that was my strength in doing this because think about it: when you have two full time careers, single mom, four kids, what's my ace in the hole? And I tell people all the time: it's time management. Mm -hmm. You know, don't tell me that you can't mm -hmm. because you can. I don't have the time. I can't do this. I can't do that. Yeah. Really, truly, I could. Any, if you could map out your day, you could. You you can do it. So if I can do it, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. There's this uh, somebody who said, "You if you can do it, anybody can do it." That's yeah. the number one thing. And the number two thing is, <clears throat> if you if there's something that you really want, and uh, you're going to have to give something yeah. else up, which might mean scrolling on Facebook or watching Game yeah. of Thrones or something. Right. But so this brings me to my next question. I know how much you have to juggle and how much you've sacrificed. Why was bringing this dream to life so important for you? Why did you want it so badly? Um, I recognized, well, for me a lot was about the personal transformation. You know, I had, I had four kids, and after I had my son, I'd gone through a second not-so-great divorce and gained a ton of weight. So for me, that personal transformation was, was an intrinsic thing, mm -hmm. but I realized at that moment, after I got healthy and got my kind of my mindset back together, that there were other women just like me in the same situation. Life, life knocked them down a little bit. And I thought if I could teach them just one thing, self-esteem, get healthy, eat better, manage your time with your kids, bring your kids to the gym with you. If I could do one thing, I think that for me was the driving force, um, not letting that go. Because I knew how hard it was for me and trying to get, and I was 38 and four kids under the age of 10, you know, divorced for a second time. And I thought with that, well, how am I going to fix this yeah. and still be a good mom and a good example for my kids? So if I could help one person, what, what could I do? And I thought it was to be, of, you, the dream was so important to you because it was to be of service. So this is not. Absolutely. I hear this a lot from heart-centered entrepreneurs all the time, uh, women in, creative women in service to others. They, they, they have a bigger purpose than money, and it's usually what you just said, helping, they've figured yeah. something out and they want to help somebody else transform. Yeah, and yes, and, and that, and truly, that hit, you hit the nail on the head. For me, this was never a money thing. Mm -hmm. I'm fortunate enough to still have my teaching job mm -hmm. so that I was able to take a little more risk without putting my family, you know, but I've learned now that that's not, you can do it without, with it. money doesn't, you don't need money to do that. That's a big holding back point for a lot of people. And I think it's a big myth. And I also think it's a myth that, oh, I have this full-time job and I have four kids and I have a big life and there's no time. Like you're saying you can really make it happen regardless. Absolutely. You just have to manage your time and your, ma your mind. Yeah, absolutely. So in talking about managing your mind, um, I know that a lot of entrepreneurs deal with a lot of destructive thoughts, which lead to destructive behaviors, and it keeps them, they, they have an idea and they want to put it into motion, but there's this big like chasm, right? 
And you have to make the leap. And you said you made the leap. But most people have destructive thoughts that keep them from making the leap. What were some of your destructive or harmful or negative thoughts? Um, honestly, I was, I mean, I was terminated from three or four different places. I, my biggest thing, you'll never be able to do this. You'll never be good enough. Mm-hmm. And the second thing was that, um, you know, kind of in the business that I'm in, people are like, she'll never make it. Mm-hmm. And that sticks in there. Who are, you're one person. What are you going to do? You, you cannot compete against the 999 gym memberships. You're not good enough to do that. How are you going to sustain that? So people laughed at me. They're like, you have, you have, you're one trainer in one, you know, 2,500 square foot facility. And, and, and that gets you because, um, and you had asked me, um, before, you know, in those down moments, in my lows, because you said you're, and you're right. You're like, I know you have them, but people just don't see that always in your highlight reel is what I like to call it. I still have those thoughts. Like when business gets slow, I'm not good enough. I can't sustain this. But the bottom line is I love it enough that now I'm starting to appreciate the ebb and flow and appreciate when it's a little slower. I can train myself to get better, do some homework, do some research, remarket myself, rebrand myself. So those downtimes give me a chance to refocus on, okay, what's the next goal? What's the next step? With a business like yours where it's Shannon Connors Fitness, and I know that you have other people at your training facility who work with you, but you're the owner, you're the founder, you're the director. Yes. Um, you also teach a lot of classes. What you're yes. talking about is the difference between working in your business versus working on your business. Right. And I, what you I have both. <laughs> is that during your downtimes, you use that as um, – momentum to work on your business because yeah. most of the time you're working in your business. Correct. Correct. I think a lot of female entrepreneurs don't do that. I think what they do is during the downtime, they start to run around with their hands flailing and they're panicking like, Fuck! and you're right. saying, thank God for those downtimes because now I can work on that rebrand I wanted right. to do. Right. That, and that's exactly, and I, you know what, it gives me an opportunity to look at my programming Yes. And instead of worrying that, okay, I'm not going to be able to pay the bills this month because I didn't get more members or I didn't do this, I think, how can I target the group that comes to me? What can I do to best serve them? Because my biggest ace in the hole for that is if I sell myself and my product well to those people, they're going to tell three more people. They're raving. They're going to tell right? three more people. Um, what, and what people don't understand, I do zero advertising outside of free social media. Mm -hmm. I had no budget to do that Mm -hmm. when I started and I still don't have a big budget to do that. So I can't rely on a commercial or a billboard of me, you know, doing my little thing. I have to rely on the fact that I'm going to commit to what I said I was going to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to give that product or myself and my package to my clients. I just hear over and over again from you that you show up in service. Like that's your, that's your like paradigm. And I wish that I could make the creative women out there who are watching, who really want to serve others. They want to help people. I want them to know that it doesn't have to be expensive and scary and hard, especially if you're dipping a toe and just getting started. You don't need to have a huge funnel to get started. You don't need to have to buy a a huge platform. You don't need to to buy Instagram ads yet, you can really start with showing up in service to other people. That just like take, taking that first step is right. the, the next thing you need to do. And, and I really seriously, if I had one word of advice to anybody who's starting a business, if you want people to know what your passion is, let them know every damn day. Mm-hmm. Blog about it, post about it, pictures about it, because if you really love it, and you really want people to back it. You have to live it, right? You, have, you do. You have to live it. And, I, and that was my, that's one of my biggest things. Um, talk about it to everybody you meet. Because now, how did like, you? Shannon, you're the fitness girl. <laughs> Shannon, the fitness girl, obviously. She's always, Shannon, the fitness girl. She's always talking about fitness. That's what she does. Now, <laughs> right. What I will tell you that when people are watching this, what they're going to say is, Oh no, I don't want to annoy people and I don't want to bother people and I don't want to like, Ugh. I don't block you. It's fine. They'll be back. That's what I learned. They always come back or they, you, I, I meet a lot of people and they say, Oh, I follow your stuff on Facebook and I follow your stuff on Instagram. 
and you don't even realize, um, and, and Chris, my boyfriend, explains to me the best way possible. Like, you're leaving a digital footprint mm -hmm. of you, mm -hmm. of your legacy, every single time you do that. And are some people going to be annoyed? Yeah, let them. Let them they be can annoyed. unfollow you, right? Like yeah, they, they can unfollow you, let them block you, whatever. But I'm going to tell you, at a point in their life when they need your service, Guess what? <laughs> Unblock. Have you found that to be true? Have you had that yeah. experience? A thousand times over. Wow. And I laugh about it now because in the beginning when I first started my business, a lot of people jump ship. It's too far to drive. Um, it's winter. It's, you know, they, they gave me every excuse in the world why they couldn't, you know, work with me anymore. And it's so funny because then they... You know, a couple months later, a year later, a year and a half later, you get a message, a text, you know, I'm really interested in coming back or can you help me with this? And, the, and here's my thing. Make those experiences positive. So if somebody leaves, good luck. Do your best. Uh, you yes, know, yes. Because you know what? Maybe they will have success somewhere else and that's okay. But you because also you want them to leave and refer somebody else to right. you. Right. Because they're going to meet people who need you. Right. Yeah. That's such a and great point. So I just, I just really, I, I make sure that they leave on a positive manner. That's great. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to cancel your membership. I hope that you have success. And if you ever need help, please come I'm back. Here. Yes. And then, you know what, Jen, they come back. Uh, yeah, they, because you're so good. Back. And they see but, results. They get results. Yes. But that took me three years to learn. And again, I want to point out, it took you three years to learn and you started at 45. Yeah. Like this was crazy? not overnight. Like if somebody no. watched you, they'd be like, oh, Shannon just like, came up out of the ashes overnight. But this was like, you've been working on this for 10 years and you only got your own space three years ago. Yeah, correct. So the dream that you made real, <clears throat> it was an idea, it was a passion, it was something you knew you could help other people with. But in order to make a dream real, women have to make and create time for themselves. We must shift something else to make any dream real. So I'm curious, what did you give up or start doing differently or change in order to make your dream real? Um, that dead time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I never really was a big TV watcher anyway, but I, I can't tell you the last time. Mm -hmm. I tried. It was the dead time at home. Yeah. Um, that hour after the kids go to bed, they you know, you're mindlessly flipping, <laughs> yeah, scrolling, flipping, um, watching television. Yeah. Having a glass of wine. Um, I, I don't have, I don't have dead time mm -hmm. and you know, everybody's like, Oh, you have to relax and recharge. And so I do, mm -hmm. but my focus time during the work day, um, is if I have, I call it my seven minute theory. I honestly believe you can finish all those menial, mundane tasks in seven minutes. If you can't, something's up. Can you give you can us an little, example? Yes, you can do a load of laundry in seven minutes. Make a bed, straighten a bedroom. And I'm not talking dust the bed, you know. People are like, I have to clean my house, I have to do this, you know, I have to. And my whole theory is you can have that, you can have that done in seven minutes. You can empty your dishwasher, fill it up seven minutes. Mm -hmm. You can write out three bills, seven minutes. You can you know, have your kids help you clean the living room. Seven minutes. Be done. Do a little laundry, fold it, put it away. Done. So I live in seven-minute segments because, honestly, there's some times in my day where all I have between one job and another, I have 20 minutes, and I look at the clock and say, okay, prioritize. What's most important? Um, is it the laundry? Is it the bills? Is it the – all those little things that we, oh, I do the bills, and then I'll go over here. And I used to do a lot of that. Yeah. Um, I don't do that anymore. One um, of the things that um, you're talking about that I really teach to my clients is you just decide. You're not like, I have this, 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 and this to do. Well, if I do no. this first, and if I do this first, and, but what if I do this? But like, you don't do that. You just no. decide and do, decide and do. And none of it is perfect, right? It's all no. good enough. No, no, no. And, and I had to let that go. Yeah. My house, guess what, is never going to be spotless. And I'm okay with that. We live here. My kids are happy. Mm -hmm. What's my goal? Happy kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do they care that there's a couple dishes in the sink? No. The good thing now is they're old enough so they can. Yeah. Oh, but that's it. But my goal is happy kids. You know, my house is, my laundry is never going to be done. Mm -hmm. I have four kids. There's five of us. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I never, I'm okay. Never achieving that goal. So you know what I do? When it gets really 
overwhelming and it starts to weigh on me. I found a really nice old lady at the laundromat who does like wash and fold service. And that $30 is, is the best my money you've ever spent. That's yes. my best, you know, to hell with Starbucks. You know what I mean? I'm like, this $30 here for Linda to do her little old lady washing and puts a little note on my little stuff. She's the best treat I gave myself. That's so a beautiful you know, story. I love you know, that. You just, it's, it's, that's my treat. So I think people have to do that. You know what, like you said, prioritize. What is it? Because I did exactly what you said. Oh my God, what do I do? How do I do this? What am I going to do in the beginning? But now I'm like, you know what? I don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. Like I go to the beach. I go on vacation. I, I do. I, my I family. To. You know, I make sure that at least one day a week, I'm making memories mm -hmm. with somebody I love, whether it's my best friends, whether it's my significant other, whether it's my kids, I'm making memories because I'm not, I, I wasn't put here to work seven days a week, even though I do, mm -hmm. but I don't look at it like work either. But you don't, but what I'm hearing, the other thing is you have a very busy life. And, and again, that those women out there who want to make this jump, um, there, a lot of the stories that they tell themselves is I don't have time, but then you're teaching them how to create the time. But then the next story will be, Oh, it sounds really hard. It sounds like she works a lot. Ooh. <laughs> and what I'm hearing from you is that you do work a lot. And I also yeah. work a lot. Yeah. But here's the thing, like, you friggin' love it. I, 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 you are absolutely right. So it doesn't feel like work. And I won't lie to you. The second grade part, teacher part of me, I work. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but that's because I have a boss. I have guidelines. I have things that need to be, you know. Yeah. Um, so... I do that job, but then my passion fitness thing, yeah, it, that just kind of comes, that, that's not my, and if that's what people are taking the leap to, if that's your passion, it's not going to feel it like it. fills you up. It, I agree. So, it completely fills me up to do this work. And I work a lot of hours. I actually, I work um, probably as many hours on my business as I did in my first business, but in my first business, I felt really depleted uh, right. because of a lot of reasons. But this when I, when I realized I felt depleted, I shifted over mm -hmm. and I feel like, I, I feel like I can't believe I get paid to do this. I know. Well, I get up every day at 4.15 and people are like, what, what are you doing? You work, you get every day at 4.15 and I, and then what time do you go to bed? I'm like, I don't know, 10.30, 11. Um, aren't you tired? And I, you know what? Mm -hmm. are, are there some mornings that I get up and I'm like, oh, it's hard to get up. But the minute I get out of the door and I get there. And you see your people. I, I'm like, and then I look at the clock. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's ten o'clock already. Yeah. How many people can say that at their job? I know. I totally you know? agree. So, and then when I come home, and then I'll read an article, or I'm like, oh, I found that, and I'm going to write about it. That's not work to me. That's yes. That's yes. sharing what I want. What my you, what you're helping people transform yeah. with. So, um, what advice would you give to creative women who are living a life that they don't feel filled up by and that they know that there's something more in them? They don't know how, uh, they, they, don't, they, don't, they, they have all these stories. Like, what's one piece of advice that you could help them to get the idea out of their head? First of all, surround yourself with those three, four, five people who believe in your passion will support you. Mm -hmm. And then make a list. Because this is what I did. Um, and, and, and make a list even if it's only five things and how they relate to that, because you'll realize that in doing that to take the leap, it's, it's easier than you think. Cause now you have four other or three other educated opinions who know and understand your passion or who are great friends with of yours. And maybe they just drink wine with you on Fridays, but they will support you because that's your, that's your circle. So when you're saying make a list, you're talking about put four or five people on the list of who are going to list yes. you up. Okay. Four or five people who will stand and support you. And then four or five, what do you need to do to get this started? Create a website. One of those people in that circle is going to have somebody. strength or know somebody. Yes. Um, you need equipment. Put that, delegate that job. These are people that care about you and love you anyway. Um, you need to market or you need some ideas on how to do media marketing. Somebody will know somebody or have an idea or have seen something. Yes. And that's what happened to me. And I, when, when I was terminated from the last place, it wasn't even my idea. Um, my little crew, my, I call my team, they arranged a meeting 
and basically called me and said, I'm because I was home crying. <laughs> I was terminated again, you know, my whole sack with me. For me. You know, I was doing my little pity party. And they basically arranged this meeting and, and said, We're coming to get you. Get your ass out of bed. And when I got there, eight of my closest friends were like, You're not, this is you. This is who you are. And they gave me the little two minute pep talk. And the minute they did that, I realized I had eight people that even if only there were nine people in my gym, <laughs> we were going to start something. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. I had a friend, Molly and Sly, who were great at marketing. I have a friend who's completely OCD and spreadsheet crazy. And she like, you know, organizes everything to the T. Um, I have other people who are like, what do you need? Do you want us to clean? Do you want us to look? Do you want us to do this? But it was, and then those people knew people. Who and that's how you just make that little branch, mm -hmm. but and those don't have to be, you know, CEOs of million dollar companies. Right, like right. I said, right. get your girlfriends together. The Who's strong at what? Yes, you know, my wife. I wasn't. I at the time when we opened my business, I, I'm not an accountant. Like second grade math is where I top oh, out. Yeah, how, like how am I going to manage books? How do you run a business? What do you do? <laughs> I don't have a cash register. How do you do this? <laughs> I have a friend who's great at math, and she's like, let me help you. Great. And she did, oh, look, it, we can do it this way. This is easy. So you just, and then you go, oh, my gosh, that's easy. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. And that's it's how it's easier. easier. Yes, yeah, so you like, yeah. you have to learn by doing and asking for help. And the other yeah. thing I would want to add to this is, like, you're talking about surrounding yourself by people physically, but I also really want to say how important it is to not, follow negative people not like really you know so like all the people in your feed who are the naysayers like block <laughs> them unfollow right. them like, right you don't want that kind of negativity they go, on your feed. they go away anyway because yeah. if you believe truly in what you're passionate about they get tired of your positivity it's so true and you don't have and, to feel bad about that yeah and i don't feel bad you know what you i'm fine i'm not for everybody and i'm at 48, I'm finally okay with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I don't you, don't, you don't want to be part of this. But like I said, anybody, my biggest thing is if I can leave with you one experience, A, it was positive, and you had a laugh, or maybe your legs are sore, but whatever, it's, it's a positive. And if you don't get rid of that toxic, you can't do it. You're never going to make it. It's going to be hard. You have to just stop listening. Yes. You know, think about, and I, and I, I work with a ton of moms. Yes. If somebody said that to you about your kid, he's not going to make it. He's not going to do well. He's going to fail the test. Would you let that continue? You wouldn't. Right. You'd be right. like, you are not part of our circle anymore. Right. But why don't enough moms do that for themselves? You know, I have a, I have a husband who is a business coach. And you would think that I go to him and I'm like, what are your ideas? And like, can you help me on my business? And give me permission because you have an MBA and I don't. And I decided in my second business, I made this mistake in my first business, but in the second business, I just stopped asking him. Like, I will like check in with him and what do you think about this? But I don't ask his permission no. anymore. And that was very freeing for me. And I feel like if more women could stop asking the permission of the important people in their life and just start yeah. saying, this is what I'm doing. Do you have any ideas or right. can you help me? Not right. what do you think or do you think yeah. I'm on the right path, but how, how can you help me is a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. And people are so willing to help because they, they, want, you, they want you to be successful. And I was just going to say that everybody wants to see somebody else succeed. Yes. You want it. Even if it means I share your post or I share this. People will do it, and it's a click of a button. Yes. Oh, my gosh. My friend Jen just made this great blog. Click share. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know? So you know, grateful for that. So everybody somebody else. Help. But it, the other thing that you're saying is um, everybody wants to see somebody succeed. And there are people who don't. Yes. And those people can go right to hell. Like, those Absolutely. people, they're not the people I have in my life. No. You don't want to see me succeed. That's totally fine because there's 10 no. other people who do. That will, right. Yeah. And that person is going to watch from a distance. They will. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be creepy. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it is. True. So, and then, you know, you do, the, uh, you know, what, what do they say? The best... You know, oh, invitation the best revenge is success. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, don't, I mean, and that's why let them leave, let them say what they want. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because some of the people that terminated me are some of my biggest followers now. <laughs> Click like, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm doing my digital <laughs> emoji wave. <laughs> Remember me? So it, it, it comes, I know it's scary because as women, I think we're, we are by nature, you, that negative self-talk, mm -hmm. too many women mm -hmm. are stuck there. You just got to jump. You just got to do it. You have but to I have have those days. afraid and do it anyway. Do it anyway. You know, so we, we all have those moments. Yes, and even somebody like you who has a lot of energy and is very regimented and obviously like is, is willing to take many chances, like even somebody like you has fear. Oh, my gosh, yes. That's what I want to tell. You and Every I are special. We okay. just do it in spite no. of the fear. The fear is still there. Okay, because what's, what's the biggest thing that's going to happen? You could, you could fail. You're going you're to fail. Okay. Which means you just learn something new, right? right. It's so that, okay, that didn't work. Now what? You're going to stop? Will? Yeah, I know. What's, you, are you going to, oh, that's your passion. Okay, so that part didn't work. What did work? And then make that bigger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are a lot of things that I've done. I've tried to run programming or I've tried to do this. And it's a major flop. I'm not going to sit and cry about it. I'm going to figure out, all right, what can I do that will be better? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's, you just, you have to get past that. Okay, so you failed. Who's judging you anyway? Who's the biggest critic of that? Yourself. You. So what? Oh okay. my God, wait, I'm not perfect and I don't know. <laughs> so what? And I think, and you know, as moms, you aren't perfect parents. Oh. You, you, there are moments that you can, in all of our, like I'm sure, you know, that you say, oh my God, I so screwed that up. And he was six. They don't remember. Like, and I was saying to my kids, do you remember when you were six and I <laughs> dropped you out of the shopping cart? And my kids are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm still carrying this load of guilt for, <laughs> you know, with that, the terrible day I slammed your finger in the door or whatever you did that you failed at. Um, but most of the time, no one is going to remember. I um, find that failures are just data points. It's like, oh, well, that didn't work. And that, I won't do that again that way. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that's the big thing. So, okay, so that failed. Try again. Try something different or whatever. Nobody remembers the person that failed. They remember the person that didn't stop trying. That's true. Because they make a all, You do not stop trying. <laughs> I love watching you. So tell people how, I know that you're located out of Buffalo, but yeah. I know that people can follow you and get inspired by you. I and I do online. I do, and I do online coaching. So how I can actually we have, reach you? How can we get in touch with you? Shannon Connors Fitness. Um, if you check out the Facebook, Shannon Connors Fitness Training Facebook page. I'm on Instagram. Um, you can email me, and I'll send you this link. It's S C Fit. Very easy. Shannon Connors Fitness um, at TeamSCFit1.com. Okay. Or if you hit, if you hit me up on my Facebook page or direct message me, um, you can send me a message. I do online coaching. I have a live stream yes. for, I have seven clients who live across the country. Awesome. Who weekly check in with me, weigh in. I write their nutrition plans. They tap into my live stream. Because everyone said to me, you need a DVD. I'm like, oh, yeah. too costly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free. What's free? What's immediate? That's what people want. Yeah. So I created a closed group on Facebook that's only for our team. And I do this. I basically hang up our, our little video recorder, and I teach class, <laughs> and they watch me, and, I, and so I offer that service for $15 a month, oh and then God. what happens is you, you tap into the live stream when you can, yeah. and I tell my clients, do you have 20 minutes? Pick one and do 20. Mm -hmm. Do you have 10 minutes? Pick something and do 10. Get rid of that dead time. Because here I am, I can be right in your living room or in your kitchen. And <laughs> so that's how they could do it with me. So there's, and I do online coaching. So that's I have awesome. people, um, I have clients who live in Florida. So she checks in with me every week and she says, okay, what should I do today at the gym when I'm not doing a live stream? That's awesome. And, and then we, she checks in nutritionally, you know, and then we do this. We do face-to-face -face or a FaceTime video conferencing mm -hmm. with some of my clients. And I can be right here so that I'm here. Yes. Because that's my goal. Yes. Is that when you leave me, I'm still here. So my I'm message ask you, of health and wellness. What, I'm going to ask you what's next for your message of health and wellness because have you considered doing like a podcast or a blog or a vlog or something? Yes. So here's my thing. We are, 
we are revamping our website um, right now so that I can do a blog and do more um, time management blogging. That seems to be, how do I fit fitness into my lifestyle of three, four, five kids, whatever the number is, because that's their, everyone's biggest complaint. I, yeah. I don't have that. Yeah. Or so you, said, you can do it from your, you don't have to get out and drive. You can do it from your home. Yes. And there were times like, you know, Buffalo weather, mm -hmm. you know, everybody was snowbound. I turned my phone on. I tapped into my live stream in my living room with no weights, 110 clients and I worked out from my living room That's and the dog and Maggie doing her, <laughs> I don't know this question, <laughs> you know, but people who know me know my life. So there's, you know, yeah. it's, that's it. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a supportive team now of 130 clients. That's awesome. That I, I, and I started with 40, Jen. I opened that place with 40 because... That's still a lot to open with, though. Well, I had, I had about 60 who said they were going to come with me. And then, you know, you have to think 10% aren't going to show because that's just lip service. 40 came with me because 40 was the number that I needed to keep the lights on. Yeah, and I yeah. kid you not. So I'm like, okay, I'll pay for this, but what's going to pay for the overhead, the utilities and stuff? Yeah. And then I said, and every month I'm like, here's my goal. I'm going to sell X amount of personal training to help somebody transform. And I want five more members, mm -hmm. which don't seem like huge numbers, but I'm a small place. And you and only I'm, can work before school and right. after school. And I'm one person. So I have to be realistic about what my goals are. I'm so proud of you, Shannon. Really. Thanks. Um, thank you so much you. for your time and your insight and I love you too and I'm so like I love watching you grow I'm so impressed I love watching you grow it's amazing oh <laughs> I love it I love it and I follow you I'm a positive follower <laughs> yeah. like, like. Thank you. I appreciate every single like so thank you I, know. I love you all right my thank friend. you I'll talk to you soon okay bye Shan bye.